Golden Girl. Kate steals the show in a 1,945 pounds or gallon as she joins William for a black tie dinner at the home of the British ambassador in Stockholm. The guest list included stylish Swedish royals and an Oscar winning star, but no one shone as brightly as the Duchess of Cambridge when she attended a black tie dinner tonight. Kate, 36, looked breathtaking in a 1,945 pounds saffron yellow gown by British designer Erdan as she joined her husband for the formal event at the home of the British ambassador in Stockholm. The British royals were accompanied by Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, 40, and her husband Prince Daniel, 44, as they dined with guests including Swedish actors Alicia Vikander and Stellan Skarsgård. They started the evening with a short meeting with the Prime Minister of Sweden Stefan Löfven and his wife Ulla. The Cambridges told the couple about the competitive game of bandy hockey they played this morning, with Kate playfully dismissing William's victory, saying, I let him win. The black tie then remarks the end of a busy day of royal engagements for William and Kate, who kicked off their four-day Scandinavian tour with a visit to two museums, a walkabout in sub-zero temperatures and a private lunch with the King and Queen of Sweden. The Cambridges will visit Norway later this week. William and Kate, who is six months pregnant, spent time with Mr. and Mrs. Lofven in an anteroom before making their way into reception rooms adorned with portraits of the Queen and Queen Mother. There they mingled over drinks with guests including the chairman of H&M, Stefan Persson, and Frederick Lundberg, chairman of Industry of Arden, the investment company behind firms including Ericsson, Volvo Group, and Skwanska. The Duchess of Cambridge was escorted into the formal dining room by the British ambassador, David Cairns, while the Duke accompanied the ambassador's wife, Sharon Cairns. For dinner, the Duchess was placed between the ambassador, David Cairns, and Scotch Goat, while the Duke was entertained by the ambassador's wife Sharon Cairns and Vic Hunter. The Duchess broke away from her typical conservative style with the bold statement dress, which featured an all-over floral print, fluted sleeves and a ruffled detail bodice and collar. The Duchess has worn the label on a number of occasions previously and has won plaudits for her daring. Princess Victoria was similarly patriotic in a black satin midi dress from Swedish brand Style Eyes Autumn Winter 2018 collection featuring a draped a symmetric silhouette. She then accessorized her look with opaque tights and T-bar dolce and gabbana and bonished heels. Meanwhile, Vic Hunter opted for a custom blue dress by Louis Vuitton, a favorite of the actress. The guests dined on a starter or Scottish smoked salmon with quail egg, horse radish cream on a bed of salad followed by guinea fowl with stir-fried vegetables and mashed potatoes. For dessert, they enjoyed blackberry souffle with chocolate ganache, before a selection of British cheeses to drink. They were offered a selection of Winston Estate Cuvée brewed from the South Downs in England, Stephen Estate Pinot Gris from Sussex, and Betterolos, so turns and port from Barry Brothers and Rudd. Earlier the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge attended a lunch at Stockholm's Royal Palace, hosted by Crown Princess Victoria's parents, King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden. Following the lunch, William, Kate, Victoria and Daniel left the palace to make the short journey to the nearby Nobel Museum on foot. It is the first time the two couples have caught up together publicly since Victoria and Daniel attended William and Kate's wedding in 2011. Kate, who is expecting her third child in April, was wearing a forest green Catherine Walker dress and coat with black heels for lunch but slipped on more practical boots and a fur hat for the walkabout afterwards. She also wore 65 pounds fake fur collar and matching 40 pounds cuffs with her walkabout outfit by Troy London, set up by her close friend Rosie Van Cutsum. She also carried a pound 895 mini Seton black bag by Mulberry. Kay finished a look with a pair of Kiki McDonough green amethyst and green tourmaline special edition earrings in 18 CT yellow gold. William and Daniel are thought to have met each other at an engagement recently but it is not believed all four royals have spent time together before. Nevertheless, the couple seemed to be getting on well. William chatted to Victoria who like him is an heir to the throne, while Kate walked alongside Daniel, before emerging from the palace doors with Victoria and Daniel, who proudly showed them the view of the river before walking with them through the cobbled streets a short distance to the square. On the way to the museum, the royals greeted the well-wishers in store to Arby Square. Kate beamed as she spoke to supporters and graciously accepted a posy from one bystander. Among the crowds were mass teacher Nicholas Child, 33, who told William that he's planning to travel to Windsor to join the festivities surrounding Prince Harry's wedding to Meghan Markle on May 19th. William told me you'll be very welcome, it will be a very happy day, said Nicholas. The couple also chatted to British girls Tia Hart and Eva Rouse, both seven, who live in Stockholm. Kate asked us if we like living here and what kind of things we like doing, said Tia, originally from Teddington. We said we liked tobogganing and she said that her children would love that too. Meanwhile, royal fan Christine Adrian, 50, gave Wiley and Kate presents for Prince George and Princess Charlotte two stuffed toy elves. I loved Princess Diana and her boys are just like her, she said. I told William that I'm so happy for Harry, 
getting married, and he thanked me. I remember them when they were little boys and they had both been through such a lot and it's lovely to see them happy inside the nearby Nobel Museum, where they learned more about the history of the prestigious awards which recognize outstanding achievements in a range of fields from the arts to sciences. William chatted to British Nobel laureate Professor Duncan Haldane. William listened intently and asked senior official from the Nobel Prize about how long it took to decide the winners and was told it was years, sometimes more than a decade. Following the trip to the museum, William and Kate visited a center to celebrate Swedish design, including iconic global flat-pack furniture brand IKEA, with a particular emphasis on sustainable furnishings. Their final event of a busy first day will be dinner at the residence of the British ambassador, where they are staying for the duration of their trip to Stockholm, attended by members of the Swedish royal family, government and popular culture. The trip is being carried out at the request of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office as part of a pre-Brexit charm offensive. They have a busy program planned, 22 engagements in all, although the schedule has been slightly amended to take account of Kate's advancing pregnancy. Wrapped up in thick coats, bobble hats and snow boots, William and Kate were each handed a stick and ball and invited to take three shots at goal from a red carpet that had been hilariously rolled out onto the ice. William stepped up first and scored with two of his attempts. Kate, who was a formidable field hockey player at school, had a better stance but was on target just once. The couple, who this morning embarked on a four-day official tour of Sweden and Norway, starting in Stockholm, were at an outdoor rink in the capital for an introduction to the popular local sport. Pregnant Kate kept the cold at bay in temperatures of minus one degree Celsius, wrapping up in a Burberry Giro coat team with skinny jeans and sorrel snow boots, while she and William both donned bobble hats to keep their ears warm. Ever the diplomatic dresser, the Duchess wore a burgundy jumper by popular Swedish brand Fjellraven. Before the game, Kate and William drank an alcohol-free tipple from a flask brought in a bandy portfolio, or bandy briefcase, a traditional office-style briefcase that usually contains a flask of mild wine or coffee laced with alcohol. The drink in the flask is normally called Gluga Glow AI type drink. Anna Whiting, 29, an international bandy player, talked the couple through what they needed to do before the shootout. She says, Kate had played field hockey and I was expecting her to be good, and she was very good. She knew how to hold the stick and she had a very good swing. I was impressed. She agreed that William, who wielded his stick with confidence, had a strong shot. I could see that maybe they liked to beat each other, she adds. Also they were pushing each other to do well. The halfback, who laid on the winning shot for Sweden in the victorious world championship team, says, it was a privilege for us to show our sport to them. We have been to China to show the sport and to come back here and show it to the royals from Britain is an honor. After their moment on the ice, accessed by a red carpet rolled out across the mini rink, the couple shared some hot chocolate with a group of school children, aged 5 to 11, who had been playing earlier. The royal couple were then given a selection of bandy hockey jerseys as presents for George and Charlotte. They are accompanied by 13 strong entourage, plus security, including Kate's hairdresser, Amanda Cook Tucker, who caused a minor furor yesterday when she published a photograph of the Duchess's hair products on social media. The party also includes two private secretaries, four press officers, their senior advisor Sir David Manning, William Zachary, one orderly, a PA, a program coordination and a term manager, 